welcome to the Encore Offstage podcast with me, Adam. With me, Ben. And me, Lucy. Hello. Hello, guys. Hello, Lucy. Hello, and Archie as well. Archie's here today. Archie's joining us. Oh, We're all back. We are all reunited for the final episode I know. of season one. Um, ben, uh, you look a little bit different. What do you mean? I, 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 I don't think anything's changed. I'm, I'm wearing like new headphones. Paper with... Sorry? You look like you've had a bad paper round. Uh, no, I'm all right. I don't think anything's really changed. I can't see much. I mean, my background's all no, Christmassy. Nothing's really changed, has it? Well, your face has no. grown like no one's business in, in a week. Oh, that's a lockdown effect. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, is that what you call it? Oh, uh, okay. It's weight as well, yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. This is what lockdown's done to me. People haven't seen me since March. <laughs> this is what's happened. Yeah, well, I wish I could grow a beard like that. I mean, it's it's very sort of. I, it's I'm very, very full. Do you yeah. use Vidal to soon or? Uh, all of it, just everything, all of it. <laughs> everything all in the world. Of it. I go into boots and just like take it all and just grab it all and walk out. <laughs> it's all. There we go. Ah, so you're a shoplifting Santa. I got you right. Oh God, okay. don't say that. That's gonna get no me. bad Santa. <laughs> bad Santa. And do you come once a year? Uh, y- yes. Ah, uh, okay, right. Yeah, Christmas Eve. That's fine. Just thought I'd ask. Yeah, it was, it was good to ask. Um, <laughs> this, as, as I'm sure everyone can tell, this week is our Christmas special because it's Christmas, everybody. It's Are, we Christmas. All, Christmas. It's Are we all feeling very festive? Merry Christmas, Art, isn't it? That's yeah. a great response. I've been finding I keep listening to a lot of um, carols recently. I do... When I was in, like, the Cathedral Choir, I did miss, like, all the Christmas services. Like, Easter was always a lot more sort of sad for the obvious reasons, but Christmas, everyone went all out. And you get the best songs at Christmas. Well, you do. All the best songs are at Christmas. Mm. Yeah, all the best absolutely. songs. And there's always some new one that comes out, but they can't beat the old ones. Oh, well, the, old, the old ones are so much... That makes me sound ancient. <laughs> the, old, the old tunes are the best well, ones. Well, no, looking at Ben at the minute, I think maybe I think he's a bit older than us, but he's just been hiding it very well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I hide my age well. I'm always tied down. Are, are you warm? I'm very hot, yes. Why don't you take your I think I think this should be rocking out until the end of the podcast, but we'll see. You'll see how uh, long uh, I survive for. I you shouldn't have said that tonight. Um, Adam, are you insisting that Santa strips? That's not a very good No, one. No, no, I'm not saying it's a family saying... friendly podcast, Adam. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. Uh, moving swiftly on. <laughs> Well, as it's our festive special, we thought we'd talk all about the festive theatre that is pantomime. And Yay. we all love panto. We're, oh, we're no, all... we don't. Oh, God. How did I Oh, do? yes, we do. Oh, no, we don't. <laughs> oh, yes, we do. Hey. <laughs> Get three of them, they said. Three See, even the dog's them, gone. Please. Even the dog's gone. He's better. Yeah, that's my attitude the same, actually. Um, Yes, pantomime. We, we've all done panto, haven't we? We've all, we're all panto actors. We have. We've all done panto. Uh, how many panto have you done? I've done three. You've done three? Done how many have you done, Lucy? I've also done three as well, but panto was the first thing that got me properly into Amdram as an adult. Yeah, I mean... Okay. A lot of sort of, like, things as a child and then sort of petered off for a few years in my teens, then really got back into it again after doing all my studies. My first um, panto was... I've got fond memories. It was at school, one. Adam. Yeah, it was at school. Yeah, the, the, the English teacher used to do a play once a year, mm. and he decided one year to do a panto. And he said to me, he said, Adam, he said, would you consider playing the dame? I said, I don't know what that involves, but yeah, all right, why not? And uh, yeah, and, and then, then here I am. Not changed much, have you? Not much. Not no, much. Just a little bit That's of facial hair now and again. Yeah. But... yeah. No, Panto was the same, same thing with me. It was my first adult amateur, and it was in my local village. And it was like my village put on a actually surprisingly good adult amateur Panto every year. Yeah. And I'd seen it growing up, as well as seeing the Playhouse Panto every single year. Yeah. And I remember my mum came to my room one night and said, Ben, would you like to be in your village Panto? Because oh. they were looking for a young boy to play John Darling in Peter Pan. Oh, yeah, Peter Pan, yeah. Uh, so I did that for a year and then did an ensemble role the next year. And then my last year, I did um, Dandini in Cinderella, which was just the oh, most fun yeah. you can possibly imagine. Because oh, yeah. I get him to slap my thigh and run around on stage. Love it. 
And then what about the pantomime? <laughs> 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 Very funny. I love the, I the wigs moving when I, when I laugh. It's great. <laughs> I can't remember if I've done five or six pantos. Whoa. Um, but I've been daming every single one. Oh, the dame, though. I envy men because I would love to play a dame. I just think you can tell a good panto by how good the dame is. Oh, well, have... In which case, you, you good job you missed Adam. then. <laughs> I, I want to see Adam as a dame. It's kind of my thing to see. I want to see you one day as a dame. Oh, lovely. You don't need to worry about seeing me as a dame, love. It's all these little bits and pieces. If you see far too much of me as it is. Oh, it made me think of that South Pacific song for a second. There is nothing like a dame. A dame. <laughs> a thing in the, I, the last panto I did properly, I had to sing, um, uh, was it from, uh, Never mind if I find someone like you. <laughs> was it, was it <laughs> But I mixed it with Fernando because for some reason I just came up with this character called Fernando that I missed. So I went, no, 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 for someone like you, Fernando. Like, <laughs> um, and it was Red Riding Hood as well. So I was sat in a little tiny bed uh, with a nightdress on. It was it was hilarious. Um, but yeah, good times, good times. Fantastic. I mean, we uh, me and Lucy did some pantos earlier in lockdown. We did some read throughs. We talked about it last week, didn't we, Lucy, about how I was playing the dame in all of those. So mm. I went full blown dame makeup. <laughs> and it was it was home. Sorry? You were at home? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> he so was, was so extra. He like turned off his I mean, screens. We're all like, where's he gone? And then he just suddenly appeared. In, I like, was going to apologize for being in bed, but you know what? I'm not so bad now. I don't feel so bad about it now. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so yeah, Panto obviously plays a really big part in everyone's Christmas life at theatre. It's not only amazing for audiences, it's a staple of everywhere, every town's got its sort of staple pantomime, but it's also the really stable support for actors that they need, and for theatres, the theatres yeah. quite often need Panto to get through the winter. Mm. Um, I, also, I also love as well how quintessentially British Pantos are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody who didn't, who's never seen a Panto from another country, they'd just be like, what is going on? I Americans had a, have no idea. Americans well, have no I idea. had a German exchange a couple of years ago that came over around sort of late November, early December time. So it was kind of sort of getting towards panto season. So all the marketing was starting to happen for it. Yeah. He was just walking around Nottingham, seeing all these, ma- all these men dressed as women going, what the <laughs> hell is this country? <laughs> Great. And we had to explain to them what panto was. It just, it just, he just didn't understand. <laughs> it's really hard to explain. How, how, do, you, how do you explain it? Um... I, oh yeah, that's a good point. How do you define a panto? It's, it's, well, it, you know, because it's not really, you don't really have like the gender norms in it, do you? Because you'll have like women playing boys, men playing like fabulous ladies. Yeah, you have, you have the leading lady, who is, a leading boy who is played by a girl, and then a leading lady who's played by a lady, and then you have the dame who's played by a man. You have a good fairy, you have a bad villain. Yeah. You have a comedy duo. Probably or a comedy part. Um, there's usually gunge um, and songs and dances. Yeah, and it's always a fairy tale. Oh, it's fairy tale. Yeah, fairy tale that's told with this music, musical fairy tale. Yeah, probably. yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we. I thought we'd start this week testing your knowledge of pantomime. Right, go on, Em. Okay. Oh, no. So I'm just going to ask questions, and I'll tell you what. We'll do like a buzzer situation here. Okay. You need to. Sh- Chuck your hand up, and I'll come to you. I'll just see it. Yeah, like okay. that. Perfect. So I'm just going to come to me with both hands up. Yay! Cool. Perfect. And right. um, keep track of your own scores, because I don't have anything to write them down on. Okay. Oh, I'm not doing it if yeah. you have to remember my own my score. Trusty pen and paper here. Oh, I'm flipping out. I've got the dog laying on me. I can't okay. do that. Right, okay, never write mind. it on the dog, Adam. Write it on the dog. Archie, <laughs> okay. okay. Okay, so, question number one. Ding! Oh no, sorry, not too early. Dame Trot is a main Ding. character in which pantomime? Oh, Adam. Jack and Beanstalk. Correct. Well done, Adam. Look at that. That was literally the first pantomime I was in, so <laughs> that's why I know that one. Okay. <laughs> King Rat is a traditional character and the main oh, antagonist of Ding. which. Uh, it's um, Dick Whittington, isn't it? It is Dick Whittington. Hey! Well done, Lucy. I'll let you have that one, Lucy. I'll let you have that one. (laughs) 
Okay, what is the name of the princess that marries Aladdin? Ding! Yes, Adam. Jasmine. Yes, well done. Okay. Ah, all right. Oh, God, this beer's getting really annoying now. <laughs> who That's was the male servant in Cinderella's household oh, who helped her? Correct. <laughs> Fuck him. Come on, keep going. Come on. What is the name of the fairy in Peter Pan? Ding! Ding yes, about. Correct. How many years should Sleeping Beauty sleep unless her spell is broken? Oh, ding! A hundred. Ding! ding. Oh. Well done, Lucy. A hundred, correct. Uh, what does the giant in the Jack and the Beanstalk smell after crying? Oh, 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 who was first? I don't know. I think Adam put his hand up first and then he shouted ding and he shouted ding. So, Adam. The blood of an Englishman. He smells the blood of an Englishman. Yes, correct. Well done. Okay. In which popular pantomime does Maid Marion appear? Ding, oh, ding, 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 ding. So, Lucy had Robin Hood, but Adam, what are you going to say? Babies in the Wood. Correct. Ah. <laughs> I've lost my score. I'm so excited. I'm yeah, I'm I'm sure she's right it down. It's fine. Okay. You're winning. Don't worry. Name, what is the name of Aladdin's mother? Ding. Yes. We don't drink it. Correct. <sighs> I'm getting really nervous. nervous. <laughs> Which pantomime? may also be known by the name Little Briar Rose. Oh, ding! I know this. It's yes. Sleeping Beauty. It is Sleeping Beauty. Oh, Correct. well done. Well done. That was the original um, name. That was the original name of the fairy tale before she became Sleeping Beauty. Ah. Which is why Little Rose in the Disney film to sort of allude to the original Briar Rose. Ah. Ah, that makes a lot more sense now. Gotcha. What title is given to the leading male role in a pantomime usually played oh, by a woman. Ding! That yes. would be principal boy. It is, of course. Which pantomime character marries Alice Fitzwarren? Ding? Adam. Dick Whittington? Correct. Oh! We're getting harder. We are getting harder. Okay. The story of Snow White yes. was first published in the 19th century in which country? Ding. Oh, ding! Adam was first on my screen. Germany. Correct. Ah, I knew that one as well. Ah. Oh, what is the name of Cinderella's father? Mr. No, I know, I knew this because I did it quite recently. Oh, I've done this panther as well before and I don't know. Oh, oh, um, um, oh, um, oh. Ding? Yes. Baron Hardup? Correct. Oh, hey. yes, well done. Well done. The earliest mention of which pantomime character dates back to 1650 in France when Jean Laurette mentioned Ooh, her ding. in his book La Muse nice. Historique. Yes, please Cinderella. Uh, it's not. Wow. Can you say it again? Say the question again. I can. The earliest mention of which panto character dates back to 1650 in France when Jean Laurette mentioned her in his book La Muse Historique. Oh. It's not what I expected, actually, on this one. Um, reluctant ding? Yeah. The only other one I can think of would be um, Sleeping Beauty, because those were two classic French ones. Is it? It's not the Dame, is it? It's a Dame, but what Dame? Uh, not Dame Trot. No, do you want me to tell you? Yes, please. Mother Goose. Oh, of course, Mother Goose! Oh. Forgot about Mother Goose! That elusive yeah. matron goose. The pantomime that no one ever does at the moment. Yeah. Mr. Smee is a character in which pantomime? Ding! Oh, ding, 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 ding. Adam. Peter Pan. What's that? Correct. Okay. Adam's getting the up on you, Lucy. Yeah. I know, he's crushing it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Who made his stage debut in 1780 and became best known 
for his development of the modern day white faced clown, which was popular in so many pantomimes. Ding? Yes. Marcel Marceau? No. What year was it then? 1780. Oh, it's only the year. Um... Like that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly can't think. Do you want me to tell you? Yeah, that's unless Adam's gonna have a. You're gonna have a. Uh, I'm, gonna have a wild, I'm gonna have a wild stab in the dark. It's not Harley Quinn, is it? No. No. Joseph Grimaldi. Oh, oh Grimaldi! Oh, the clown! Got yeah. that in a million years. Uh, <laughs> no, I never got it. I know you said his name. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, but. What does Cinderella's fairy godmother turn into a coach? Uh, ding, oh, ding, 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 ding. Adam got there first. Pumpkin. Correct. Oh, this, this is getting always right, but she's just like a second behind. Right, I'll let you have some, Lucy. Catch up. <laughs> no, don't let me have got Last four questions now. Last four. I'll let you have two. <laughs> Who is Princess Aurora also known as? Oh, ding! Yes, Sing Lucy. You're correct. Well I'm getting all the Sleeping Beauty ones. 21. I haven't said which, which two, so if you're not careful. Complete the line. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Ding! Who's yes. the fairest of them all? Correct. Right, those are the two you've had. I'm not giving you any more. <laughs> who, in 2017, achieved the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Great British Pantomime Awards? Oh. Ding? Oh. Adam. Kenneth Allen Taylor, is it? No. Oh. No. Unfortunately, no. more well known than that. Oh, 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 ding, 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 Adam. ding. Christopher Biggins. Correct. Oh, I couldn't think the full name, yeah. Which panto centres on the struggle between good and evil as experienced by Gerda and her friend Kai? The blank faces. Gerda. I thought that was a cheese. <laughs> I thought it was a type of pylon. <laughs> Gerda and her friend who? Kai. Kai. Um, reluctant ding. I'm going to yeah. guess Hansel and Gretel or something like that. Not, no, not Hansel oh. and Gretel. Yes, Adam? The, uh, Babes in the Wood? No. Oh. Uh, Do you want me to tell you? No, no, no. Oh. Um, Something's is surrendering. It's not. It's not Mother Goose, is it? No. No. It's not actually a panto I've seen done recently, so I don't know how well known it is. Which panto is based? The story of which pa- Uh Which panto centres on the struggle between good and evil, as represented by Gerda and her friend Kai? Gerda and Kai. Gerda. Gerda. No, no, no. Oh, ding. Oh. Yes. Is it the Snow Queen? It is the Snow Queen. Oh, that was a good one. Well oh, done, yeah. Lucy. I just suddenly remembered it's the two children. Yeah. And I was just like, I remembered the boy with the glass. And I was like, yes, I think I know this one. Well right. done, Lucy. Final question. Oh, is this worth any points? No, because it's really oh. easy. Okay. A witch. Living in a gingerbread house features in which pantomime? Ding! Oh, ding! <laughs> oh, Adam. Hansel and Gretel. It is Hansel and Gretel. So, Woo-hoo! Lucy, it falls to you to reveal the winner. Was it yourself or was it Adam? I think we all know who won we that one. <laughs> Adam with a stonking 13. 13! Wow! 13. Ooh, yeah. Well done. So, that means, do you, do you get 10, Lucy? No, I got eight. Oh, God. Because <laughs> there was two we didn't get. Oh, there were two you didn't oh, get. Oh, yeah. no. Oh. That was awesome. That was awesome quiz, that was. Well, well done, done, guys. Well done, Beth. Well done. done. Well, I think we have reached a point in which we can now move on to some Panther stories. Oh, now we, yes. now, we have asked all our lovely listeners and viewers to send in their panto stories, and we have received quite a few. Cool. So I don't know how we want to do this. Do we want to like just read them out and talk about them, or do we want to rank them in order of best panto story? 
Shall we read them out? Shall we read them out? Because there's, there's quite a Can lot. Then... There are quite a few. Okay. Lucy, do you want to start with one of yours? Okay, do some Lucy. pictures while we're doing it. So my first one comes from listener Lindsay. Which one's this one? I'll put that on there. And she said, my favourite panto story is when the man playing buttons ran into the forest thinking it was his kitchen scene and started talking about being in the kitchen at the manor. This was Cinderella. <laughs> Everyone was panicking wildly and I was wondering where the Baroness was so she could call him off. However, she wasn't around, so I did an impression of her to shout him off. Literally the <laughs> quickest thinking I have ever done. And bless him, <laughs> as soon as I did that, he realised what he'd done and scarpered. Then I pranced back on, ready for my forest song scene. <laughs> Very quick thinking Cinderella there. Nice. Brilliant. I like it. I like it a lot. Well done. <laughs> I always think Panto is one of those ones where you've got to have very quick improv skills because there's always something that's going to go wrong. Something goes wrong, <laughs> always. But the thing is, it's so hectic, you're just like, yeah, just go with it. Mm. And, the, th and the, the beauty of Panto is that even if it does go wrong, the audience love it. Oh, the yeah. amount of times where the mess up is always the funniest thing in oh, the Panto. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, you get it wrong and it goes and it gets funnier laughs and the jokes in the show. Yeah. I remember one panto I did, the woman fluffed up a line and she said something inadvertently rude and the whole cast just burst out laughing. We just <laughs> <laughs> she didn't realise what she'd done. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right, what other stories have we got? Well, we've got, I've got one here of um, uh, my very good family friend, Liz has sent this in. And uh, so she says that they were in uh, Satina Panto Foyer at the Palace Theatre in Newark uh, for a traditional yearly panto trip. And Can I just, start... pause, just pause you Sorry. for one second? Yeah. I've just realised your beard's above your nose. It is. Yeah. He's so Me used too. to wearing a mask. There now. we go. That's. I don't <laughs> like that. I can see too much of my face. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it was bugging me. I'm sorry, it was really bugging me. Sorry. Right, sort it out. There you go. <laughs> You've just got a little tiny gap here, like a letterbox. A letterbox. Um, for any of those who are not watching the video version, which there is a video version of this podcast on YouTube, for our listeners, you will have missed that um, that little thing. Um, so yeah, sorry. So they were sitting in the, in the, in the, in the foyer of the Palace Theatre in Newark. And I remember staff approached our table and asked if there are any men in the group who are up for a laugh. And you can imagine where this is going. Um, and she replied that her, her husband was. Now, her husband is um, probably didn't want to be going up onto doing anything like that. He's not the most, doesn't enjoy getting involved in things too much, I don't think. So the men weren't there at the time, they'd gone off. So she asked the member staff, asked for seat numbers and his name, and that was that. So they're watching this pantomime, and the dame and buttons get to the scene where they're trying to make a cake. Right. And they ended up getting an assistant, who, of course, was this guy, who gets dragged up out of a seat onto the stage. And um, you can imagine the chaos that ensued with um, squirty cream everywhere. Um, the dame fell in love with him, of course. Um, but I just love that. This audience, of, this is. Um, this idea of just just nominating somebody else to be embarrassed for yeah, I mean, it's, it's great. It's it's, the it's thing all of, things. That's the thing about Panto is it's again people are more up for stuff at Panto than they are at any other mm. time of theatre and mm. even musicals. People are like oh no, I'll just sit here in the audience. I'm not supposed to be interacted with. Whereas in the Panto, you're just like yeah, just go for it, shout anything out you like, heckle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think the only musical theatre exceptions that I've personally seen are Avenue Q and Rocky Horror. Yeah. People who go to see those do seem a lot more into sort of like participation. But yeah, Panto is definitely the one where you could just drag someone off, embarrass them. <laughs> I, I just love that it's sort of pre-nominated in this, in this case. So the person got to the side beforehand and didn't tell her husband. It just happened. It was all planned. It's, it's brilliant. <laughs> I've never been up on a panto stage other than being in the show. When I've ever seen it, I've never been, or anyone I know has ever been called up. I, I have a panto story of my own. 
Ooh. Ooh, do you tell? Uh, many, many, many years ago, back in days when uh, um, when I was little. Uh, Archie, do you mind? Excuse me, we're in the middle of a podcast. Do you mind? Thank you. Sorry about that. I got interrupted by the dog. Um, <laughs> I was young enough, back in the days when days of old or nights of old and all that, uh, I used to be little and uh, I went up on stage um, mm. at the Theatre Royal in Nottingham mm. uh, with Little and Large. Um, ben will not know Little and Large. No, I don't. I'd, I'd be surprised if Lucy knows Little and Large. I do know Little and Large, yeah. Yep, Little and Large. Um, they were basically a double act in the 90s and the 80s. Um, ben. Doing your mates there, Adam. Thanks. Um, I'm just gonna do 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 do. Um, <laughs> so, well, so we went up on stage and they asked us the questions, and they brought out a table of bells uh, for us to ring at certain points in a song. You know the song, song sheet, mm-hmm. part of the show. Um, and yeah. I, they're all face down, so everybody's ringing the bells, and I picked mine up. Mine's not got a dinger in it. Um, which I was like, oh, I didn't, I didn't realise. So, of course, done that. And then they get everybody off stage and they give everybody a, a little bag, a little goodie bag, apart from me. And I didn't realise it was so they could keep me on stage to talk to me a bit longer. But I then start to walk off the stage thinking they've run out of goodie bags. So I just went to go. And they're like, no, come back, come back, quick, don't go, don't go. Um, but no, that's one of my standout memories of of Panto, um, of being on stage at Panto. Uh, it was my probably the earliest memory I've got of Panto. Um, uh, so yeah, very good, very good fun, uh, and lots of fun. Brilliant. Again, it's one of the things about song sheets is, again, you, it's one of the chances for you to just just have a chat and just find mm-hmm. you know wait for some kids to say something funny. Um, but when oh, I when I do panto, when I do Damon's panto, I get adults up as well, and they don't have a choice. I don't pre-pick them; I just get them up. <laughs> um, because, you know, especially if I, you know, like, oh, come on, love, come up here, come with me, like this. You look, yeah, you, you look like you've not done enough. Come on, you need some exercise. Up you come, <laughs> um, and stuff like that is is great um, because again, people just get stuck into it and they love it. Mm. Uh, so yeah, that's one story I've got. Anybody else? Any other stories you've got, Lindsay? Well, I've got one from listener Emily. Because your friend was called Lucy and I've called you Lindsay. No, hang on. <laughs> your friend was called Lindsay. You're co- oh, fudge me. <laughs> <sighs> it's a great thing. Like, I, do, I do that all the time as oh. well. With people Sorry, today. Lucy. Yeah, and, and, and carry on. <laughs> carry on. So, well, listener Emily has submitted this one for her panto story. I was playing Rapunzel, and when Rapunzel finds out that the dame was her daughter, that she was the dame's daughter, I had to hug the dame. However, one of his ball ball earrings got caught in my wig, so we had to cuddle until the lights went down on that scene. <laughs> oh, that now, then, you had a really good like costume malfunction story a few weeks oh, back. I did. Sorry. Yeah, I talked about this on the podcast quite quickly, so I'll just go over it for Adam, who might not have heard it. I was doing, uh, I was doing Cinderella a couple of years ago, playing Dandini, and I had these boots that had these massive, big metal soles on the bottom, nice. and sort of a leather top. And I had to, we, had, we didn't have sound effects, so I had to knock on the floor three times, make a, uh, like a knocking on the door. Yeah. And I whacked this floor so hard one night that the bottom of my metal sole came away from the, sort of the heel of the leather boots, all just sort of flapping around. Yeah, yeah. And on the curtain call, you obviously know a panther, you've got a big staircase to walk down in the front, and yeah. the two little side staircases to get up onto the, the back, sort of backstage staircases. Yeah. So being Dandini, I sprint up the staircase to go sort of do my sort of, here I am kind of thing, my run, my run on. As I'm running up this little tiny staircase, the bottom of the heel that's flapping around, the big sole gets caught under oh, one of the stairs, Oh, rip no. the rest of the shoe off and I just go flying straight into the into the set and oh. on the staircase stand up take the bow and walk down you're fine but I later find out it's the night they recorded it oh no so somewhere I have the recording of me crap falling 
it's just great. Like, you sort of see me go, what the hell? And then sort of gather myself and carry on with the show. But, it's uh, the sad floor, isn't it? The one night the film is always going to be the one where yeah. there's something chaotic happens. Because for that one, I had the <laughs> tightest leather trousers. It was so conscripted. I couldn't do anything as I was tripping. So I was just... Perfect. <laughs> perfect hey, just, Sorry. Yeah. You had the tightest leather trousers? I Right, I was given these. I did not... Let me find a picture. I did not... I, I was not... Oh, there's a picture evidence as well. Excellent. Okay, well. <laughs> I was not given any form of sort of uh, coaching or sort of told, ah, oh, so what's going to happen? So it ended up looking... Can you see that? Oh, my God. <laughs> so I look like that. You look, you look slightly sort of... In pain from them as well. Was, you look like you know. Ross from Friends in that episode where you can't get him back on again. I have not seen Friends, so I will not understand that reference. Okay, right. <laughs> oh, that oh, is uh, oh, bless you. I remember when I was playing Jack in a panto, because um, I was originally playing um, this mad old toff in it because I was doing my I was doing my finals for my ACA qualifications. They're pretty stressful, and I was like, yeah. you know what? I don't don't want a big part. I just want to do a fun, silly one, and then I can do ensemble for the first half before I do this little small part. But the lady playing Jack ended up becoming pregnant, so obviously you can't have a pregnant Jack on stage. So in the end, they like, do you want to do? Do you want to take over? So I was like, yeah, okay, I'll take over. And they, for the final act, sort of, you get into your wedding gear and they were like, we've got these for you. I'm not kidding you. They were the smallest pair of hot pants I've ever <laughs> seen. And I took one look at these. Now, for clarification, I'm about five foot nine and a size 14. These hot pants were for all the prior principal boys who had all been, yeah, those weren't the hot pants, thank God. They, well, were, they, in weren't. De- they were indecent, these silver hot pants. And they were, well, every other principal boy's won them. And I was like, yes, because every other principal boy was about five foot four and a size eight. It probably went over my thigh. And I was like, I am not wearing this. <laughs> But luckily, I do pole dancing as a hobby. So I was like, I'll wear my own silver hot pants. Thank you. At least they cover everything. <laughs> oh, the last brilliant. panto I did was Sleeping Beauty. And um, I was the cook and came out. And th- this was done by a... Um, how can I describe it? It's a drama school, but they, they have an adult section for people that just want to do like basic drama classes. Okay. And they decided to do a panto for some reason, unbeknownst to me. And the lady who ran the class, she said, we've got every other part filled apart from the Dane. Can you come and do the Dane? Yeah, sure. All right. So I came along to rehearsal. Every single rehearsal we were, we were in fits and stitches um, because I was making stuff up as I go along. And, of course, everybody else who weren't used to performing uh, was just laughing at the jokes. So we're doing all that. And we get to the actual show week. And I was like, what are we going to do? Because they had no budget. No budget whatsoever. Okay? And I said, how are we going to do the costumes? And the lady runs, she goes, well, I'm a ballroom dancer. She goes, I've got some dresses. Well, there's somewhere on the internet, there's one of me in this lime green dress right and a bright pink i managed i bought the wigs bright pink afro wig right and or it might have been a like a sweetie wig and it was cut down it was open back right <laughs> so all the way down to my bum cheeks there's this <laughs> open back dress of me a bright luminous green lime green dress so i i thought well i can't just have an open back so I made out I got a tattoo and I just drew a big smiley face on my back as I turned <laughs> on. And all the dresses were were her and I was like, but I was worried, I was like, how do they fit me? I'm not the thinnest of people. But I'm like, this this lycra must be this must be super lycra. Um because I don't I did, you know, I'd got flamenco dresses, I'd got hello, you know, Hawaiian dresses, cooks things, all sorts of stuff. But this one dress, I remember thinking, I, as soon as I walked out, I remember 
somebody I knew being in the audience on the first night and I could hear them at the back of the theatre wetting themselves laughing at me in this dress because I don't think they'd ever seen me in a panto before. But, oh, just some of the costumes are wonderful. But you just go, ah, oh. yeah. I, I first, first ever costume I ever wore was a Jerry Halliwell theme. So it was red, white and blue. Um, knee-high stockings and a, and a ginger wig. Uh, and I called myself Old Spice. Um, and it was it was great. It was <laughs> some some wonderful wonderful costumes and ideas. But oh, when they when they go wrong, they go wrong. When they go wrong, they go spectacularly they wrong. They go spectacularly wrong. Well, yeah. in in that vein, Adam, I do oh. have a little confession to make. What? what um, so I'm just trying to get them up now. But whilst I'm doing this, I was just going to show you two more pictures from my last panto days. Yes, please. Yes. Um, which I'll look at them up. That one there. Which you can see just how quite how tight these number of trousers right. actually are. Um, have you not? Have they look like they're sprayed on? They literally they were every night. I was even that. Or they've done a cat woman and sewn him in. I was going to say. Just. I was going to say uh, Michelle Pfeiffer would be, be jealous of them. And then, um, of course, because it's traditional panto, that happened as well. Oh, yes. <laughs> good old so, pie cream. Good old pie cream. If, if you're not, yeah. But it, the problem with that one was, that was actual shaving foam. Oh, yes. So it went in my eyes, and my eyes oh. were up. Oh. Like a yeah, that was, that was a fun one. But um, this, Adam, I oh, have to tell you. Yep. Uh, I have been sent by my amazing drama teacher, uh, Jay Wilson, has <laughs> sent me some of these pictures, because you have done quite a few shows with her. Yeah, I have. Yes, yes. So I will. Be, I'm allowed to share this on social media. I've been told. It's an amazing <sighs> picture of yes. Adam as a Dane. It is indeed. Yes, me. What I want. One. Yes. Um, how young think, are you? How young am I? That was. I'm trying to think back now. That would be at least ten years ago. So I would have been a mid twenties. You look so much. Well, is that a bad thing to it say? It is a fantastic wig. But that's, that's an well. amazing fantastic. costume. Well, it's got, you can't see it, but there's a red ruby gem in the middle of it as well. Uh, and Tim, Tim, who is always my sister, we, we, it was, what was it? It was Taylor of Radcliffe was the, uh, was the panto. Uh, ladies, um, uh, mozzarella and uh, I was Mrs. Mozzarella and I can't remember the name of my sister. Um, I think it was something like Barbarella or something like that. Um, and yes, and as you can see, I have ample bosom. Uh, for those for those that can't see the, see the picture, I have ample bosom, and I was very chuffed with that bosom. Um, I, as you can see, the pearls go into the into the cleavage uh, very well. But what you can see also, because of the dress, I had to have um, uh, braces to keep the dress up. Oh um, God, yeah, yeah. So I had to wear uh, the what I haven't got on there is my hoop skirt, so that went under the dress, and then the dress had the 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 braces on over the top. Um, I don't know if I've got I've got a picture of me as a dame if I can find it somewhere. If you would like to see a different version of me as a dame, oh yes, definitely. Um, okay. But yes, thank you to Miss Orson. Awesome yes, thank you, to, thank you, thank you. I was supposed I I miss her. I miss her a lot. We did loads of shows together. Um, quite a few actually. I've Different pictures. Oh, did, oh, did she, oh. Well, no, she's, she sent me um, this amazing wall. She's just her, unfortunately. No Adam in there. Oh, um, bless. I'm not sure. Can you tell me, is that the same show? It might have been, actually. It might have been. I wouldn't that's be surprised if it was. That's a pretty amazing panto costume. That is mm. a pretty amazing panto costume. That's a kind really good one. Kind of like the, either sort of the prince or sort of the traditional sort of wedding finale kind of costume. It is, yep. isn't it? Very nice. Absolutely. Well, as I promise, I've got one here of me uh, in uh, um, uh, in uh, what's the what's the word uh, in in proper gear. Now, this outfit uh, I will show you first uh, is one of my favourite panto costumes. I can't share. Can I share my screen, please, so I can oh. show you my picture? How do I allow you to do that? Uh, so, I don't know. There we go. There uh, we go. Okay. Share the share. What? The... what? How? Uh, there you go. Thank Pretty you. Out. There we go. Here we go. Oh, oh wow. wow. 
so this was this was Red Riding Hood, the Panto Red Riding Hood. For those that can't see the picture, uh, it is a beautiful red frilly dress, red and gold. Uh, I've got a pearl necklace on, uh, red and white pearls, uh, red and and a big pompal pompal thing on the top. This was actually Les Dennis's Panto dress. Oh, really? It was indeed when he did Panto. This was his dress. Oh, wow. the, the lady who sorted the costumes out for us, she knew some contacts and she managed to get me some fabulous dresses. And this was me as Granny Knot in Red Riding Hood. Um, and uh, at the high heels, uh, I had to practice wearing the high heels. Um, and when somebody who I now know, didn't know me at the time, um, was friends with the MD and they went, why is the MD friends with a 60 year old woman? Um, <laughs> And they didn't realise, this is again back when I was like mid-twenties, late-twenties. Uh, as you can see, I look very young. Uh, and the, la the song that we had to dance to was Lady in Red. <laughs> hence, hence, Lady in Red. I mean, that is a phenomenal costume. I can't, I can't stop looking at the hat, though. That hat is fantastic. That hat is amazing. Mm. It, and of course, I'm wearing a wig under it as well. You must have been boiling in that. It was roasting. Mm. Absolutely right. And again, ample bosom. <laughs> um, I'm very proud of my ample bosom. Um, and the, the, you can't see very well, but the nail varnish as well. I used to wear multicolored nail varnish. And I used to go and get into town and uh, go to various shops, obviously out of costume. And uh, I'd pay with I'd pay the money and uh, they say, oh, yeah, yeah, look at my the nail varnish. Oh, like your nails. I'm like, yeah, I'm Panto Dame. And they're like, oh, and that's how I used to sell tickets. <laughs> it's just a way to keep the nail varnish on during the day. It was great. <laughs> Somebody actually thought that you were a sixty-year-old woman. Yeah, from a distance. I, was, I said to them, "I said you also need your eyes. You must need your eyes testing." I said, it "Came and the did you not think that the guy who plays the dame was actually a young bloke?" And they're like, "No, I just you were convincing as an old woman." I'm like, "Oh, thanks, dear, thanks." I remember. I remember when I did the Jack Panto, I had these little girls, they were like, they kept sort of staring at me and I was like, why are they staring at me? And they came over to me and they were like, does everyone else know that you're not a boy? <laughs> and I just went, no, I was like, they all think I'm a boy, so shh, keep it, keep it shnum. I was like, they all think I'm a man, so just pretend. And they were like, oh, okay. <laughs> I think little kids are just the best. They're Brilliant. just so funny. What's your favourite song sheet song? Oh, I do think I think like coming round the mountain is always yeah. a good is always a good go to tune. Daisy, well, Daisy, give me your answer to. Sorry, Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer to. Oh yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Oh, I was like worm, worm at the bottom of my garden. Yes, oh, I've not that's, heard that song in years. <laughs> that, that's that's the Nottingham Playhouse classic. That one. Yeah. I used I didn't used to do um, songs. I used to do a dance uh, oh. to the tune of to the tune of uh, heads, shoulders, knees, and toes. Um, oh yeah, we used to do that for like um yeah like an intermission for the spooky scene. Yeah, wigs, knickers, bras, and socks. It was called. <laughs> of course, it was. Of course, it was. Um, and of course, taking taking them out and trying to do the the moves as as the MDs getting faster and faster. Uh, it was it was always uh, challenging, shall we say? <laughs> yeah. And I think the people who construct the set well as well are, you know, just geniuses. We had a guy called Barry who used to do all the set building for some of the pantos, and he was phenomenal. You just, I just don't know how they do it. And I'm just there messing up the painting. <laughs> <laughs> Bless you. Ah, well, it's just some cracking memories, cracking, cracking, mm. uh, cracking stories that people have got. It's great. Well, I, I have one story for my partner. So we, in fact, our first date, actually, I came straight from a dress rehearsal. So I still had all of my panto makeup on and all of my lower bits because I couldn't be bothered to take them off. So I just shoved on, <laughs> I just shoved on a different <laughs> I'm off, I'm late for a date, see you. So, I mean, three years on and he's still dating me. So oh, bless him. him. I, I have a slightly, just from just from that, I have a date-related story with Panto. I, I invited two girls to a Panto um, and I didn't realise they both came on the same night. <gasps> oh, no. 
That was awkward. Uh, hilarious. <laughs> oh, dear. And I was backstage and the people were like, what are you going to do? I going, I don't know, I don't know. I've got to act to think about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I bet that made for awkward dates afterwards. <laughs> slightly. Slightly awkward. <laughs> Well, I remember, I remember getting Daniel involved because he started off doing sort of like a bit of lighting behind shows and then yeah. we needed people to do sort of, well, we needed like an assistant stage manager. All he thought though, they were like, oh, you'll be in charge of curtains. And I remember he came up to me and he was like, that's the easiest job in the world. He was like, open one curtain, wait till interval, close it again, open it for the second act. And I just looked at him and I was like, you do realise that we use several curtains for each scenery. I said, how do you think we change scenery so quickly? And then they handed him his own script and they're like, here's your headphones, learn this script for your cues. <laughs> 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 I, I, you know, fair play to him. He did a great job, although he nearly messed up one of the scenes in Cinderella because the transformation was happening. And he was so involved in it. He was like getting all the orders to people and he hadn't op- he hadn't changed the curtain to reveal yeah. the carriage. He just left it on the borrow seat. So at the last second, he was like, oh no, you can just hear the panic over the thing. Frantically <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the curtain up so it's not open. Like, da 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 I was still Boris back again. <laughs> the only time I've ever helped out backstage at Pante was at the Nottingham Arts Theatre. And... I, I, they asked me to do the, they had the song sheet lyrics hanging from the ceiling and it was my job to lower them and pull them back up again and I said yeah sure why not well it was so heavy <laughs> so heavy and then there was one night I couldn't pull them up and it was like uh, 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 one side <laughs> couple of it, and they were like, and they made a big joke out of it and I was like hey, somebody help me please <laughs> I was trying to pull it as hard as possible oh, oh that was funny oh great fun have we got any more stories, Lucy, on that list? I do have a couple of stories. So, listener Lucy has submitted a couple to us. In Treasure Island, Baza forgot what scene it was and got changed too early. So I had to stall for a minute on my own, just talking to the audience until he came back on. <laughs> Her other story was, my fairy dress burst open at the back in the finale. I had to shuffle off awkwardly backwards so no one would see. Oh, wow. Jeez. I know. Oh, I would absolutely die if that happened to me. And then her husband hasn't escaped, though. She said, my husband had to buy new pants from Primark because the trousers Panto gave him as the only male chorus member left very little meat and veg to the imagination. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... You know, oh, I think no. many a man would like that kind of brag to be quite honest. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. I told you, costumes are interesting. Costumes are always the best for the panto. <laughs> oh, some cracking panto stories there, guys. I, I think... Sorry, Lucy, go ahead. I was going to say, I remember for one of these pantos with her husband, he was meant to be my dance partner for one scene. So my first ever panto, they were like, right, here's your dance partner. But one of the, the man playing the king, unfortunately had a medical like emergency. So he stepped in at the last minute. So opening night, he stepped in as king. And I'd obviously learned this dance. Everyone's got partners. And I was like, hang on, who's going to be my partner? So in the end, I just stood in the middle. Everyone else stood, and I just mirrored it, dancing. <laughs> I was going like the clappers because I was doing both sides, both sides of the dancing. Brilliant. And then at the end, my little medieval sausage fell down like a necklace and I was like, just pushed it back up again. So my hair was like this. <laughs> the rest of the oh, I love it. Oh, great. But yeah, he was incredible though. He stepped in. I don't know how he learned all those lines for that opening night. He was phenomenal. So fair, fair play to him for stepping in because it was a big role to fill. Awesome. But it looked hilarious, blessed, because like the Julie, lovely woman playing the queen, is obviously sort of like many years older than <laughs> so it's just the juxtaposition of a very young king with his older wife. <laughs> <laughs> the 
I think. Well, I think um, we should move on to the next section because earlier on in the year, uh, when we spoke to Tom Hopcroft, we spoke to Tom about pantomime and here's what he had to say. So we have another special guest on our Panto podcast special and we have a Kylie with us today. Unfortunately, it's not Hello. Kylie Minogue. Or, oh yeah, it's, it's a bit deep voice for the Kylie you're all expecting. Um, we have Tom Hopcroft back. Hello, Tom. Hello, how are you doing? Hello. Oh, good, mate. Good to see you again. Yeah, how are you? And uh, you are involved as Kylie, the, one of the ugly sisters in the Nottingham Playhouse, Ponte Cinderella, is that right? I am, yes. yes. My first Tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, well, I guess after kind of such a crap year, um, once, let, me, let me start that again. <laughs> no, you can say that, it's fine. Right, keep it in, keep it in, keep going, keep going. <laughs> I suppose after such a crap year, Nottingham Playhouse have had such an amazing glimmer of hope at the end of Tunnel by finally, by, by kind of bringing back their classic Nottingham Playhouse panto that's a massive staple in Nottingham's Christmas tradition um, and yeah I was I've been really lucky enough to be cast in it I've never done a panto before um, obviously being from Nottingham that was the playhouse I watched growing up as a kid and I'm playing my first ever dame so when uh, it did make me laugh when the audition came through um, <laughs> I went to see one of my best mates play Prince Charming in the panto at the Liverpool Empire last year and mm. I'm playing a dame <laughs> in, <laughs> in my first panto and my agent did say well we didn't expect you to play a dame just yet um, but yeah so it's happening it's happening you must be one of the youngest dames yeah I think I am I yeah I, yeah I thought that as well yeah Thanks yeah me. but that's mate that's the, it, it, I, I, from personal experience being Dame is one of the one of the best experiences in the panto. Yeah, you've been a so Dame you, for a panto that I did. Um, yes, at Bingham. Yes, that's right. When yeah. you were, about you were uh, eleven or twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah probably yeah, about eleven years ago. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Now you're twenty three. You just made it feel how old I am. <laughs> um, so obviously, with there with Cinderella, and we've done pantos together as well. Yeah. Has that experience, I'm not saying the experience with me, because that's just horrific, but has any of the experience that you've had with amateur dramatics pantos helped with the professional panto? Yeah, of course. You know, um, panto is panto. And um, mm. and kind of, you know, having seen panto scripts before, knowing how pantos work, knowing the classic panto jokes of taking mix out of local towns, all that stuff. Mm. Um I guess also being from the area that where the panto is also helps because um, in our panto this year, you know, there's loads of uh, local humour um, kind of taking the mick out of different local things and being from around here kind of helps because I, I know it all and I get it all. Yeah. yeah. And it's a social distance panto, is that right? Yeah, that is right. That's bang on. So uh, not just yeah. we're having social distance in the audience, but we're also socially distanced on stage. So uh, none of us are allowed within two meters of each other, um, okay. which is, you know, different. Um, yeah. I, I don't think we've quite figured out how we're going to do uh, Cinderella and the Prince kissing, but that's, that's <laughs> yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. Should be interesting. Yeah, I'll figure I mean, that one out. Unprecedented. I hate that. <laughs> word, <but> like, <laughs> you know, it's never been, it's never, we've never had to do any sorts of shows under these circumstances before. So Shall we're we going to figure experimental. it out. Experimental. Yeah. Experimental. Yeah, is that, is hate... that the way we're going? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll wait and see. I, I, I think it's really exciting to kind of, oh, to be honest, it feels amazing to be part of something that feels important. It feels really important this year after everything that's happened to be doing a panto, for, you know, the kids of Nottingham and be able to give them a little bit of just escapism for an hour whenever they come just to forget about all the rubbish that's happened this year, that all them not being able to go to school, not seeing their friends. And just for an hour, give them pure fun, humour, escapism, exactly what theatre should be. Um, so it feels great to be something, part of something that feels so important and urgent, you know. Do you have a favourite panto? Do I have a favourite panto? Um, Cinderella, of course. Of course, of course. Yeah, just for the disclaimer at the bottom there. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, that's a good answer. Yeah, Cinderella. And, and working with John as the Dane. Yeah, um, that must be um, eye opening. Yeah, I mean it's a bit of a what dreams are made of sort of thing, really. You know, I watched John as the Dame growing up, um, so to be able to kind of work alongside him now is 
is amazing, especially as my first game. Kind of everything he does, kind of make note of because he's yeah. just he's brilliant and he's so effortless and yeah, he's 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 great to watch and to and to learn from. So uh, yeah, as you said, it's going to be a huge eye opener for me for the next few months and getting into live shows. That's going to be, you know, I'm sure it's going to go even up up even up another notch. What do you think it is about Panto that endures for so long? Why do you think everyone goes to see it? It's, it's like a British institution to go and see a Panto at Christmas. I'm just interested in what, what your, sort of why you think that's, we still, we still have it and why it's so popular even now. Yeah, I guess it's that thing, isn't it, where Pantos are, it's the cliche, but it's true, perfect for the whole family. It's silly enough that the kids love it. Um, it's magical enough that the kids kind of, can't believe it um but i think there's also a lot of nostalgia for adults about pantos you know there's kind of like you remember seeing your first pano how it made you feel um and the good pantos like pantos at the playhouse will have humor for all ages as well you know they'll have the little uh nuance uh innuendos and whatnot that make the adults feel part of the fun as well um yeah. and i guess also we're a country so steeped in tradition that panto just feels like a huge, like a massive part of that theatrical tradition and yeah as you say i don't i couldn't quite put my finger on why but a christmas without panto just feels weird doesn't it it would it feels wrong it does feel wrong there's something so british and brilliant about about panto that yeah it's just it's so kind of embedded in us to go and watch panto I think that's, that's why it's so brilliant that the Playhouse is able to, to put on a panto this year because it is a, a year without, especially the Playhouse panto, which is, it, for, for us Nottingham, it is an institution it's every single year to go and see it. I mean, I've seen it since I was two, same, thing, same panto every single year. And um, so it's brilliant you're able to, to, to put something on for... Totally. And see. you know what? Hats off to the Playhouse for sticking their neck out in a way and doing it when I think, that you know, I think there were... There's, there can't be more than ten theatres in the whole of the UK that are putting on pantos this year, um, or the kudos pant or the kudos theatres aren't, which is most of the theatres in the UK. Um, so good on the Playhouse for sticking their neck out and saying, you know what, we'll do it, and kind of taking that risk in a way, um, because they know how worth it is, not just for them but for the people of Nottingham as well. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank you so much for popping in and telling us thank about uh, about Cinderella. And, and have a uh, merry Christmas. You too. Have a lovely Christmas. And I hope Santa brings you everything that you want, as opposed, you know, like the 1st of January 2021. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah. it's good to see you again, my friend. And we'll speak to you Thank again you. soon. Speak to you soon. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. So thank you, Tom, for speaking to us about pantomime. Uh, since we, we did record that, some things have changed about Cinderella. Uh, you can now watch Cinderella in three ways. You can watch it on demand. Uh, which is available to rent now, or you can watch it in person, hopefully from the 19th of December till Saturday the 16th of January, or you can watch a live streamed production of it on Christmas Eve and on Saturday the 19th of December. All the information is on their website and you can go and check it out there. I'm sure we're all, well, I definitely am, Adam as well, are gonna be giving it a watch at some point over the festive period. Yeah. Will do indeed, and uh, it'd be nice to see. It's nice to have been chatting to Tom and seeing some of the pictures that have come out of it. Mm -hmm. um, you know how well it's doing, and uh, like it's, uh, some fab reviews coming out for it as well. Absolutely, so, I'm glad. I'm glad they've been able to put it on because let's be honest, we everybody needed a panto this year, don't they? Definitely, it? yeah. And the Playhouse panto is such a staple of Nottingham, so it's going to be great to have it back. I, I have a question for you both. Yeah, yeah. pantomime, just at Christmas. Ooh. Now that's interesting because I'm of the view of it should not just be, it can be all year round. I love it all year round as long as it's not festive. But I live with a family who say it should only be at Christmas because I associate it with Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, but again, there's a lot of like uh, it's Easter pantomimes, aren't there? I've seen floats around the Easter. Yes. And there's adult pantomimes, things yes. like Cinderella, um, 18 plus pantos that are on all year round and things. So I'd say panto all year round. See, I'm directing a panto at the moment. Mm -hmm. There's supposed to be, was supposed to be on at Christmas, mm -hmm. but obviously due to national restrictions, 
um, we aren't able to perform. And we've managed to get a slot in March. So it's technically going to be an Easter pantomime. Mm. See, I was going to say, for me, I think sort of like family pantos, I always think of as sort of like Christmas, January, like sort of November to January time, or Easter. I yeah. always think mm. really good sort of times for like family ones. Yeah. Is it, I was just curious because I know a lot of people are very stalwarty, like, no, pantomime should be just at Christmas or during the festive period. And other people like, I mean, I know the opinion, panto is panto, put it on whenever yeah. you like. Mm. I mean, to be fair, I mean, so, sorry, I'll say that I've always seen my pantos at, at the Playhouse, I've seen it every single year, all my, uh, all my life. And I, we yeah. always used to go and see them in sort of mid to late January, towards the yes. end of the run. So yeah. I, I, like, like an end to Christmas. Yeah. Like a, like a, so it's so sort of like uh, January 7th and stuff. But then the audiences started getting so small with one year where it was like only half the schools were filled that we went on New Year's Eve. That was brilliant because that was really nice. And then we did Boxing Day last year. And that yeah. was, we moved it a bit earlier. So that, but that was a really nice way to bring Christmas together. But I don't yeah. actually, I think for that, I don't think it's just, just Christmas. Sorry, Lucy, you were going to say something. Um, well, I can't really remember what I was going to say now. But yeah, I just think... I think as long as you don't make it overly festive, you can do it whenever you want something. I think, yeah, for families, like Christmas is usually the big time because everyone's together and things. But I think, you know, if it's not an overly festive one, then I don't see why you can't have it at other times of the year. People still want to be entertained and pantos are always a good way to do it. Exactly, yeah. And this is, and again, and like you said at the start, they're good ways of getting some money in. Mm. For the companies and for the theatres themselves. So, yeah, it's worth doing. Yeah, it's brilliant. Do you want to plug your pantomime, Adam? Yes, please. I was waiting for you to ask. Um, yes, uh, we are performing Aladdin. Uh, Aladdin, the pantomime, as opposed to, you know, the film, um, at the Duchess Theatre in Long Eaton. It is in March. Dates to be confirmed. Um, but keep an eye out. Um, and we have... Um, the traditional Chinese themed Aladdin pantomime. Uh, we have the genie of the ring. We have the genie of the lamp. We have Aladdin, Jasmine. Uh, we have Chinese policemen. Um, we even might, might have a panda. We have Ooh. a panda Ooh. called Nobby. Nobby the panda. Of course. Of course. I know, don't say nothing about it. Um, we'll leave that one well alone. And we have... Of course, the evil Abanaza. Um, and uh, it's going ever so well. People, are, We've been rehearsing over the lockdown period online. Um, and it's been great fun. Great fun. Uh, some classic okay. tunes that you might know. Um, I'm not going to spoil them. Uh, but uh, it's a good chance. Because obviously people can't uh, sing uh, during, you know, or the audiences can't sing or shout too much. So we are, we are doing it socially distanced. And we are encouraging people to to dance as much as possible, to clap along and to join in. So we are finding ways to work around it. Um, and who knows, by March, it might all be in vain and we'll be all right. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But uh, but no, can get your tickets now. It's all for charity. It all goes to charity as well. So it's all being done for charity, for the Rotary, um, to raise money funds for them. Money funds? That's just, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Funds, money, cash, donations, moolah, you know, all that stuff. You know, Dosh, Wonga. And hopefully near over time that we can sort of bring in the podcast and have and um, we can talk about it a lot more when we get closer to March. Or yes, absolutely. Well. I may even be able to convince some of the characters to come and talk to us. Oh, that'd be good. That would be good, wouldn't it? So uh That so sounds fantastic. Yeah, it's it. it's going really well. Yeah. Um we've got the set, we've got the costumes, uh, we're getting props, so it's all ready to go. We just just need the theatre to put it in. So yeah. uh, just got to wait till March now. Fantastic. I can't wait to see that. Thank you. Please come. Please come and see it. Well, yeah, absolutely. We're going to do a little Panta, um, podcast road trip Ooh. out there. Woo -hoo. Bring the whole poca podcast to you. Yeah. We, we can come and record some specials out there or something. We can do, we can arrange some stuff. Yeah, that'd be good. Sounds yeah. Good. Come and see us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I feel like that is a really nice place to start to wrap up. Uh, <laughs> we have reached <laughs> Oh, the end. crap, sorry. Oh, perfect. What well, no, a We have reached the end of season one of the podcast. Ah. Oh. 
Oh, we're here. We're here. We made it. We did. No, no. It's, bigger, it's sadder than that. Everybody all together. Oh. oh. Ten episodes. About <laughs> ten and a half, eleven hours. You can see it on his face. That's <laughs> That vein on the side of his head's popping. I'm surprised you've survived 10 episodes. Of I've done 10 episodes, and I mean, we are signed on to do another 10. Yay! Well, hey, so, yes, season two of the Encore Offsets podcast is coming out. Episode one is on Saturday, the 17th of January. Woohoo! All platforms. And, Lucy, do you fancy joining us full time? I would absolutely love that, Ben. Thank Brilliant. you. Brilliant. Welcome to the team, so, Lucy. Thank you so much. It's been amazing. Thank you for guest hosting this season you, here yeah. and there when we needed you. You've been it's an amazing cover. You've got, to have a, you've got to have another key for the, the podcast coverage. Yes. Get it in again. If we can, so I can lock you two away and bring you out when we need you. No, no. I, there's no room for Lucy in the podcast cupboard. Oh, okay. She's got to have a key so that if I get locked in again. Oh, yeah. So you can, <laughs> you can un- unlock her. Ben's just sat outside with a cup of tea and just like, get me out the Yeah, it's like two weeks I was in there and he was yeah. like, I'll be, I'll just yeah. lose it. Lose it. Oh. <laughs> That's what I was like. What he was like, doing? Yeah. yeah. Coffee and have Lucy instead. He's just, he's just there in his, his grotto of despair. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call it that. What a brilliant description. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll go despair We wanted to say actually, just thank you to everyone who's listened, who's shared, who's liked our first season. Uh, it's been a really great experience to, to do, and a learning curve, I think, as well. It has. Um, it's been wonderful it. to do. We've had some wonderful guests who yeah. have very kindly come on and answered some some lovely questions and some really weird ones as well. Yeah. Um, but also, it's been a wonderful chance to sort of get used to the format and realise what we want to do with the podcast. Yeah. Absolutely. We have, we've got some exciting changes coming. Obviously, we'll bring, bring Lucy in full time. So we'll have three voices whoop, whoop. Uh, to bring another another voice to the team. Um, and we are also looking for guests for season two. So if you have something you'd like to plug, or if you'd just like to come on and chat to us about theatre, you can message our um, Encore Offstage pod uh, socials, or you can just send us an email, or just message one of us, and we will put you in one of our slots. We now have nine slots to fill. So hopefully, and we'll be recording that in early January. So please, yeah, get in touch. Yes, please. And we'll sort something. Remember, like Ben just said, if you've got something to plug, you want something to say, if you've got something that we've got a discussion about and you want to contribute, by all means, just get in touch and we would love to hear from you. Absolutely. If you've got any questions or any topics, same thing again, just get in touch with all of us. We're if you all... want to pay us some money, um, and you want to just, do, you've got a load of money that you don't want anymore, we'll happily take it off your hands. We will, we'll happily take it off your hands to get some microphones so we can actually be held properly. Yeah, we'll, or we'll, we'll just clean it and, you know, just look after it for a bit Yeah. Uh, in a bank account. Um, and just, yeah, so yeah. whatever. Or, you know, you just want to send presents, we, we'll, we'll happily accept gifts as well. well we him in his cupboard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I need stuff for the cupboard. Just, to, I need a, like a mirror, or, or you know, a floor, anything like that would help. Some walls, um, some soundproofing. Yeah. Yeah, soundproofing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Extra, extra safe lock for the outside, <laughs> so Ben can lock me in. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. Uh, please send us everything you you fancy. Um, but yes, we are we are at the end. We filled a good hour and 15. So this is a little bit of extra special long season finale. Yeah. Uh, thank you again for everybody who's listening. And Adam, I am going to, for Christmas, the Christmas period, as we're all feeling very festive, I am not going to lock you away for Christmas. You can be Yay! free. Be thank free until, you. until early January, in which we'll lock you back does, in again. Does that mean I get to eat this week? It, I, I think so. Lucy, can we see we not have to have scraps pushed under the door. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say, yeah. I just get the yeah. little bits and the detritus. Yeah. Little bits of kibble. <laughs> oh, God, what have I found up to do? <laughs> <laughs> Lucy, what have you got involved with? What have you, you're going to regret this come the start of season two, I tell you that much. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, again, thank you both of you for joining me on this on this little journey. So All right, Santa. Great to have you on. Um, I'm going to now take this off because I'm really hot. And we will all, all three of us, 
surprised that you've kept it on as long as you have. I know, I have done. Um, oh, and question. we need to shout out Jack as well. Jack, we've got to shout you out because Jack, Jack. is our um, editor who does oh, our yeah. YouTube and our audio and all that nice stuff. Um, we both edit it together. He does all the clever stuff. Yes, well done, Jack. Jack. You're, you're, Jack. You're, you're buzzing. Or, well done, mate. Um, helping us out to do that because we, we, I, I could not have about you because there wouldn't be a podcast because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, don't say it too much. You won't want to pay him. No. Just... Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, but yes, thank you both of you for joining me this season and we'll see everybody will you, and you'll hear us again Saturday the 17th of January. Mark it in your diary. Sunday, 17th of January. Mark it in yes. your diaries and we'll and all be back. Have a lovely Christmas. Yes. Hanukkah holiday period whatever you're celebrating just a happy friday happy friday yeah yeah happy happy december uh and have a wonderful good, new year good new year let's be honest it can't be any worse than this one so <laughs> uh and let and i'm gonna say it now if anybody puts if any you're one of those people that puts those year in review statuses on your social media i will come to your house and i will keep knocking on the door to keep you awake all night because don't do it Nobody likes them. And you don't need to do one this year because everybody's had exactly the same year. Yeah. This year. So enjoy yourselves. Have a lovely Christmas period. We all deserve it. Yeah. So, uh, and stay safe as well. Stay safe. stay safe. Remember, keep two metres apart and don't touch anything. Don't go licking doorknobs um, or anything like that because that's, that's, the advice our, that's our official advice. Don't yeah. go licking doorknobs. Keep <laughs> apart. Don't lick a doorknob. There we go. There we go. All right, can we finish now? There we go. Good. On that note, <laughs> keep a look out on our social media. If you've got some exciting updates coming over Christmas, we're going to have some new things coming out here and there. <sighs> Thank you so much for watching, listening, sharing, asking questions, sending us messages. We'll see you all in the new year. Bye bye, everybody. Bye. Bye bye, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Encore Offstage podcast. If you fancy, you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter at Encore Offstage Pod. We also have a YouTube channel where we upload a video version of this podcast. And that's also at the Encore Offstage podcast. Remember, if you enjoyed the show, don't forget to leave us a rating or review on your podcast app of choice. Thank you so much for listening and we'll both be back. The Encore Offstage podcast is produced by Ben Bradley and Adam Guest. It is edited by Jack Spores and Ben Bradley.